All righty. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're doing well. It's the middle of the lunch hour here on the East Coast, but it's getting close to lunchtime for our friend Oops. Mike Storm from AMP Advisors here. Mike, first things first, with this boring market overall, it's about got me kind of hungry. How about yourself? How, how are you feeling about things today on it? You know, it's interesting that you put it that way because as, as, I was, we, were, as we were preparing for this, or I was, it was like, well, what are we going to talk about today? Because it's kind of been kind of just lackluster here lately. Um, so, uh, uh, but every day is another day, different day, just maybe a little more exciting than others. <laughs> I've got to agree. You know, and speaking of exciting things, it seems the renowning sentence across the industry is we do not buy stocks. We buy good businesses. And that was from Buffett's uh, Buffett's letter there for those that didn't have a chance to see it. Mike, how are you feeling about the longer trade? I I've had many people so far come to me and go, Creed, you know what? I day trade to do this, that and the other, but I need to start thinking about my kids, my future, my family. And while, you know, that that's an aspect for people to go about, in my opinion, it's one of those it depends kind of questions. But Mike, if you were to give a broad goal for, I'll say, the early parent to someone that's about to send their kid off to college, what type of a portfolio would you be looking at as far as putting things out there in the market? And what type of percentages do you look at whenever you're working to try and add some dividend type yield stocks to your portfolios? Boy, where to start with all those questions? Great, great, great questions. Well, first of all, I, I will tell you that that's the questions you're asking are probably the things that we focus on the most here. Uh, we're more of a long-term holistic goal planning type of firm as opposed to the day trading. Although we've got some of those people and clients that do that. You know, so it, you know, it depends who we're dealing with. If you're looking for a younger parent with kids, maybe saving for future college, obviously, you know, 529s are a good place to put those. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, custodial, various ways in, 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 in investments you could use. Um, typically, when we look for something like that, we're looking for growth. Um, growth with balance, I would, would add. I mean, we just don't want to go great guns into to small cap or something like that. We want to kind of diversify uh, and, and put all kinds of, you know, multi-cap in there for that matter. Um, if you're looking for something, you know, with dividends, usually under, you know, normal circumstances, usually, you know, three, four, five percent. But like you had mentioned before, you can get even higher than that nowadays um, with some investments out there. So you know, it depends on what your comfort level is. And, and do you want dividend, strictly dividend income? Do you want dividend with potential growth? Um, so there's, there's, I think you, you nailed it there. Is it depends on that particular situation and what particular, the comfort level, the risk tolerance, et cetera, et cetera. I like that. I like that. So a question for you on this as well, when we're talking about future planning, uh, I've had a lot of people ask me lately, look, Creed, things are not looking good. Shots over the bow. You know, I think we're going to go to a recession. Kicks in my head. We've been in a recession, but it is what it is. For the people that are trying to plan their budgets out, you know, I've talked with, I said, just in my opinion, take your current, uh, take your current expenditures and try and get them down to about 70%. Now, do you think that's a little bit too drastic overall? And I'm thinking cutting out the unnecessary subscriptions, maybe the meals to Arby's or whatever, things like that. I'm not saying, you know, hey, we're, you know, make sure you cut all the lights off or anything like that. But uh, what are your thoughts as far as personal expenditures, especially on food and energy moving forward into the spring and the summer here? Well, I think you're spot on. First of all, you know, when, when things are going well and the economy is booming, um, that's what we tend to do. We set up these subscriptions or these monthly payment plans and so on and so forth. And all of a sudden we get into times like this where things are a little tighter. We're talking recession, things like that. That is a great place to start because we forget about those. So we, we go back to those and, and I agree with you. I think if you were to, if, if you, we, we forget those, so it's out of mind, out of, because you're not paying it each month, it's on a credit card or something like that. I think when you go back and review that, you might be surprised at how much you actually could cut out because it's like, you know, I forgot I was even do that. I don't even read that or use that anymore. Um, and so I think that's very important. And I would encourage someone to, 
you know, about every two years, you probably need to do that just because you don't know what you've racked up and locked in over the course of that time. So I think that's a, a great place to start. Um, and then you might be surprised at how much you cut out. And then what you have after you cut that out is like, well, okay, now, now things aren't as tight as they once were. Uh, but I think we've got into a, a, um, a system, if you will, over the last several years of, of, of Apple, the way Apple sets up things and the way others, we just get caught up in that. We forget that we have those things. So I think reviewing that, that would be the first place that I would check. Um, and then I agree with you going back into those unnecessary things that you may not need uh, that, that, that you could cut out. You know, maybe instead of going, going out to dinner four times a week, maybe you go twice or, or something like that. Um, I have to tell you, I am, I am, uh, I am bullish on the long-term trends of the market. I, um, I agree. And, and I think that, uh, I think there are opportunities. We've talked about buying on dips and things like that. And I think there are opportunities to start post posturing and for the long term. Um, and so I, I, I'm bullish on that. And I encourage people to do that. Um, I think short term wise, we've got some volatility. Um, but I don't think that should hinder your long-term investments. I like it. I like it. Mike, uh, how did you feel about the, the CRM earnings that came out? I mean, you know, we, we saw that's the first time in a very long time. I saw something make almost three times its expected move. I mean, it closed around the 165, 170 when an expected move of 12 bucks. And the next thing I know, oh, your alert went off 190. I go, and I go over and I look at it. I mean, that, that's an absurd move overall. But then for Tesla as well with their investor day, not too many people were happy with that. So do you think we may see a rotation in capital from the fund managers, from even individuals that do a self-directed IRA, et cetera, into maybe going to companies like CRM? What are your thoughts? Um, I do believe that's there's going to, again, those shift into technology that have to do with AI or, you know, productivity and things like that. Um, I do think there's going to be the shift that just because more and more people, I mean, let, let, let's face it, technology is the wave of the future. Um, and any, any, any program or any system that can make our life easier, um, <laughs> Even though it's, it, you know, we, it's like, we don't like we have a lot of time to free up, but if it, it can free up more time that we can create more business or whatever, it's, it's going to catch on. It, it's going to be popular. So I'm not surprised at what happened. Um, I guess what's, what's a little surprising is that, or frustrating or whatever you want to call it, is that a lot of people are predicting these earnings to be bad or these downturns because of the economy. And, and we keep, for lack of better words, we keep getting disappointed on the upside because it's like, wow, we didn't expect it to go up that much. Wow. Um, and I don't know. It's, I hate that, that cliche. It's different this time, but we are, in, <laughs> we are in unprecedented times with, with the economics that we're in right now with the supply and demand disruption that we had. And so it's, it's really, it's really confusing for, for investors out there right now. You know, so with that aspect being on things, the market being definitely more difficult than it has been in the past, uh, there's been a very large conversation around the, the idea of silver and gold, both a physical and a paper aspect of things. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I've, I've got my silver and my gold for rainy day on everything, but do you think we may start to see uh, swaths of people coming into this as we start to see a uh, recession put across the news more and more and possibly even the, the call to depression? Now, I'm not thinking... $50, $60 an ounce again, but is it outlandish to think uh, silver being around 27, 28, give or take on there? I mean, we're sitting around the 22 area now. Um, I, I don't think that's outlandish. Um, my question has always been when, when you buy precious metals, uh, the only way you make money on precious metals is to buy and sell. There's no dividend. You don't get dividend off of it. You know, so it's, it's buying and selling. And a lot of people turn to precious metals when they're pessimistic about the economy. But I've always had the argument or, or the argument is that. If, no, it's fine. It's an art. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's an argument, man. If, if we if we get into 
a, a situation where the currencies go down and, and, or, or, or whatever, who's to say that precious metals would, are going to be the new currency of choice? Mm-hmm. Maybe, it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's beans, maybe it's grains, maybe it's bullets. Who knows what that next currency of choice was? Now, we knew back in the day that gold, because we were on the gold standard, we knew that 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 would would be a currency and you know back in biblical times it was gold and silver and things like that but in the future who's to say that's going to be the same currency of choice maybe it's something different i don't know i just uh, with precious metals i'm not opposed to someone getting some for their portfolio small sliver of their portfolio Uh, but when when people start panicking and, and all of a sudden jumping into precious metals i always get a little concerned because they're usually going to be buying on the high side at that point because of the the panic buying that's out there. Well, and the crowded trade as well. And yes, you have that little bit of initial demand, but does it last? And, you know, something, something that I've looked at across every downturn, doesn't matter if you go all the way back to the tulip crisis and forward up to now on things is uh, the idea of healthcare overall. And that's why I've been keeping a close eye. United Health, uh, your MetLife, uh, even your insurance agencies on there. Do you think uh, that's not exactly recessionary proof, but it does seem to be at least recessionary resistant overall? What are your thoughts on healthcare moving uh, moving into the year here? You know, I think you're onto something there because you know when 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 you drive around and when you look, the the businesses that are expanding are healthcare professions. Um, and and uh, so you say, you know, I don't know if it's recessionary proof, but you know, I might say, yeah, it probably is because everybody still needs health care. Um, yeah. We don't, we don't, I mean, just because the economy goes down doesn't mean I don't break my arm or I don't need gallbladder surgery or heart surgery or something like that or, or pacemaker. I mean, so I, I, I might just, I might say that, you know what, that actually is recessionary because it's, it doesn't matter what's going on. Um, but we've also got an aging population too. People are living longer. There's more healthcare demand than there ever has been. Um, so I think I think you're spot on there. That that's definitely a, an area that that has has places to invest in, in good long term prospects as well. I like it. I like it. Mike, educate us, please. What what's a sector that you're avoiding like the plague? What's just one of those things that you're going? This is uh, maybe not full malarkey, but you definitely look at it and go, you know what? This is just not a good area to be in right now or in the next, we'll call it quarter or two. I, I would tell you utilities are probably an area that I would not be investing in right now. Really? Um, tell us more, please. Well, I think uh, utilities are, are interest rate driven. I mean, the higher the cost of capital becomes for utilities, the more expensive it is and hurts their bottom line. Uh, but then to top it off, you've got uh, uh, the, you know, more and more people move into green projects with solar and things like that, which is hurting. And, and you've got administration that is emphasizing uh, more green. Uh, so I think right now in, in, in this economic cycle, I, I would probably stay away from utilities right now. I like it. I like it. All right, Mike, I want to be respectful of your time overall. If someone wants to come and work with your team and figure out more about how you're working through uh, this God, I, I'm scared to call it an economy anymore, but we'll go with that one <laughs> with things. You know, I might call it a dumpster fire. It is what it is. But how can they get a hold of you? How do they can keep track of you guys? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, uh, you know, we're uh, Michael Stern Associates here in Harrisburg, Illinois. We're, we're with the Merit Prize. Um, and uh, you can reach us either by going to our website uh, or uh, Facebook, social media, um, or give us a phone call at uh, 618-252-5595. I love it. I love it. Relevant links will be in the description. Love, please go give my friend Mike here a call if you've got any. Uh, you know, you want to move some things around. You you want somebody that's really level headed about the market. Please go give my friend Mike a call. Mike, thank you for dropping some great thank knowledge you. points today. I look forward to talking with you again on the next one. Have a good week.